are you talking about? <laughs> this is going to be really interesting. <laughs> Gandalf. Gandalf. I want to say seven or eight. No. Twelve. Twelve. Twelve? Close enough. Seven. I'll trust Nick. I'm going to keep on saying seven. Nine. Close enough. Plus the two <laughs> that I was... That I was mentally thinking of. Thinking yeah. about. So nine, yeah, it's of course, it's carry the one. King. King of the men. King. Oh, come on. You're killing us. <laughs> that's Orlando Bloom, right? No, that's... Oh, no. Uh, that's Viggo Mortensen. I'm so, I'm so done. <laughs> that... Smog. I just think thinking of Smeagol. Bard the Great. Oh. You're really bad at this. That's three. Yeah, there's three. <laughs> Nineteen. It's too many. <laughs> three times three times three. Three <laughs> times three. three plus, it's the 16. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, oh no. This is a disaster. <laughs> One of the most memorable moments for me was this really beautiful scene that's uh, quite late on in the movie when um, Tolkien goes to meet up with the mother of one of his friends who's passed, um, Mrs. Smith. And it was just a, a beautifully written scene and, and one that we shot kind of later on in, in the filming sequence and it just it was very evocative of a lot of emotions for me. We went in there and normally we'd rehearse and set up and plan how to shoot a scene, but we turned to Dome and said like kind of these emotions are, are bubbling right here under the surface, let's shoot it right now and try and capture it. And I think everyone uh, on set that day felt like we'd done something quite special, so that was a nice feeling. The scene that doesn't really even have any dialogue, um, but we are outside the opera, listening to the opera and reenacting it, and we have all these props and costumes that we were throwing on, and some of the, it was choreographed in a sense of like the area that we had, but then we had all these props to play with, and Dome just was, is such an excited person all the time. He's very passionate, and it was quite late at night, and it was very cold, and we just rallied through and improv and had such a, a fun time, and I think nothing that we did could be wrong. It was just just fun, and uh, that was a really fun day. I've met some super fans. Yeah, we're um, in New Zealand or here? Or? Uh, actually, when we were doing some press in, oh, in the WonderCon. States, at WonderCon. Oh, I miss that. And it was incredible to listen to them speak because they can speak the Elven languages and the languages that Tolkien created, but also their knowledge of his work is is mm. unfathomable and something that I try to immerse myself as much as possible, but I can't compete with their, their facts. I did speak to someone recently that by choice used to glue their ears in the shape of elven ears for a period of time. What? Yeah, they super glued their ears like that. Are they complain? Yeah. I was. I, I remember reading them when I was quite young and then I would get excited every time a trailer would come out for the Peter Jackson films because uh, I love magic and fantasy and i be seeing them on the big screen and you know when you read something and you envision it in your head you hope that it gets translated onto the big screen and I just always love those so much so to be a part of something that tells the story behind the story was really special. I learned the bits that are on the screen <laughs> essentially and that was tricky enough for me I'm not very good with language so it's something that uh, we had the professor of, uh, at Oxford help us develop those languages and um, the different uh, influences that would, would create them and then, and then I would kind of break them down phonetically and, and work with the dialect coach Hugh O'Shea on it and just kind of do my best. Drawing. Yeah, we went to uh, the Latin uh, in Liverpool, Liverpool and there was a Roy Lichtenstein. Is that how you pronounce it, Roy Lichtenstein? Yeah. Exhibit on and we got some crayons and we copied his work so we have... So we just sat there, wise. it wasn't planned really, we just kind of sat there and started doodling and then all these art students were walking around us. They were quite brilliant. We, they were doing actually, lovely work. Actually yours was really good. But, <laughs> but then we went to visit some of the Beatles, you know, the museum and whatnot because as you do in Liverpool. Um, yeah, just kind of exploring and wandering it was really fun. Well it kind of goes back to, you know, that um, the family element of the X-Men, the really emotional core of them, and then that kind of being ripped apart by what the changes that occur to Jean Grey uh, and how all the characters deal with that. It's exciting. Yeah, I think it would be cool if they did blend them together. I'm, I'm not sure what their plans are, but I love playing the role and I got to take them to a, a new spot in this film and try different things. So um, if there was a way to keep growing within that character, then that would be something I'd be interested in, yeah. Thanks, man. Obviously. <laughs> That's... Uh... That's what I'm part of. It's very different, those superheroes to mutants. They're kind of they kind of exist in different worlds. 